Hey folks, um, thank you for coming to my talk. I'm super excited to be at Reclosure. I'm glad to be here with all of you, um, be it virtually though this year. And uh, I hope wherever you are watching from, you are well and safe and uh, and happy. Um, today I'll be talking to, you, talking to you about the labor of love by Atomic. It's taken the last two or so years of my life and I'm super excited to share it with you. So maybe quickly about me. Um, my name is Alex Balu. I work as head of design at Absa Bank, I'm a bank headquartered in South Africa with operations across all of, um, a number of countries in Africa. Great place to work. There I look after a team of about 160 people, um, design, UX UI designers, process engineers, service designers, an ops team. Um, great bunch of people. I really enjoy working with them, challenge me every day. Um, but doesn't really have anything to do with why we're here today. Turns out after that job, when I get home and the full moon's out, the developer in me returns. And that developer really enjoys closure. And uh, um, yeah, you could call me a way developer. Um, and this is kind of how my, my closure journey started. started, you know, one job in there at the time it was lecturing and then writing code in, in the evening. But if we go back to how we got to this point, you know, I must say it started with JavaScript, you know, and uh, Jeff, Jeff uh, Atwood's uh, quote always uh, <laughs> makes me chuckle. You know, any application that can be written in JavaScript will eventually be written in JavaScript. And that's too true. You know, I, I saw it to my own eyes. You know, in my JavaScript obs obsessed days, I, I stumbled across OSJS, which is a Unix type browser, um, OS that runs in the browser written in purely in JavaScript. Um, on OSJS, you can play Wolfenstein, um, also written in JavaScript. And at the time, you know, there was a single um, computer board called the Tessel, which, you know, similar to your Raspberry Pi type boards, but was entirely written in, or you write, you, you interface it through JavaScript, which is also cool. I think, unfortunately, it's been discontinued. Um, but that was pretty neat. And maybe a more, uh, familiar one to the folks folks watching um an nbb basically closure slash babashka that runs in in javascript you know, so javascript really did did take over the world if we're being honest right uh, and at least for me it was i lived and breathed it all the things in my stack the front end the back end and my build tools all all javascript the one part that was not JavaScript and was quite awful to be honest, was actually interfacing the database. It was always a mission, and you always had to find this library and it didn't work, and this edge case and this bug. I just didn't like it. Um, I was liberated one day though by Sales.js, a really cool framework um, that created a nice wrapper that allowed you to interact with the various databases in a idiomatic JavaScript fashion. And for a long time, I actually used that. Um, but when it took away my pain of working with databases, the general pain of working in, in, in JavaScript remained. And that really is the fragility. And maybe it's just the way I write code. Um, I mean, my front end code is fine. That, that I've been doing, and I really don't write, enjoy writing JavaScript with front end. But the node piece always felt flaky. It always felt like if you just looked at it the wrong way, your back end would come cr crashing down. Um, and so, that's one of the reasons I probably ended up in Clojure. But on the way to Clojure, I discovered a new database that really reduced the complexity and meant I didn't have to use a framework, you know, to interact with my backend. And that was Firebase and Pass. And uh, you know, both great startups at the time going head to head, split the community, which one was best. Um, and I remember in my mind almost seeing this vision you know, two part, two roads diverged in the wood, and I, I took the one that's traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Um, I mean, not, given that we're talking about atomic, I mean, I'm sure you can guess it was fire based that I chose. Um, and you know, at the time, you know, it was, I had my own preference, but it was luck as well, because Google bought Firebase and really took them to the next level without them losing their spirit. Um, whereas Pause was bought by. Facebook and taken out back. Um, and so 
so I really enjoyed this time, you know, when I just discovered Firebase and life was easier and I could remove sales and make my my um, code much simpler without the framework. Um, but it was still JavaScript, you know. On more than one occasion, I overwrote the entire root of my my um, Firebase DB because, you know, Firebase is basically a JSON structure. And if you write to the root, you can overwrite everything and you lose all your data. It happened a number of times. And it reminded me that I was still living in the land of, of JavaScript. But soon after, I discovered Clojure. It was glorious. You know, it just felt robust, felt solid, no flakiness at all. Um, and, you know, the immutability at first really um, confused me, like, how do I program that where all the data is unchanging? Um, but eventually, I, the penny dropped. Um, and when the penny dropped, then Datomic just seemed like the obvious choice. You know, uh, I watched all the articles, read the blogs and the podcasts and looked at the tutorials and um, I was obsessed. And eventually, you know, I was like, you know what? Let me try out this uh, Datomic thing. And then I saw the price. As low as $1 a day. Look, look. Before I got involved in the tech startup scene, um, I was a marketing intern for a babysitting company. And I can tell you, as low as is marketing speak for, you will never pay this price. It will always be higher. So I was like, nope. And you know what was really the final blow was I saw it run in AWS. And look, folks, I'm not the smartest guy, but I do know, know, know my way around numbers. You know, and that AWS pricing calculator, I mean, surely you need a PhD to use that thing. I was like, this is a surefire way to rack up a bill and just get hits with hundreds of dollars at the end of the month. I was like, nope, not on my watch. And so I said, play ball to the Atomic and carried on using Clojure. It was robust, it was stable. And I mean, I mean, let's be fair. Closure's libraries for interacting with the various databases, you know, Postgres, um, Mongo, um, Redis, actually pretty, pretty decent. So, you know, at least there was the stability of Closure, you know, all the way through. Um, but then something inter interesting happened. It was about, you know, two years ago, just before COVID. Um, I went to Closure D gave a talk there about my journey about being coming a Twitch developer and it was amazing you know to be in a conference in person um in Berlin for the first time speaking to people passionate about closure and you know it just fired me up I was ready to get stuck in you know and then COVID came and the lockdowns came and you know what it was glorious so I'm, I'm heavily introverted so being fired up from closure from closure D the lockdown and people not, legally not being allowed to visit me. I mean, it's great. I could just write code day in, day out. And obviously, I mean, still went to, well, still worked, you know, um, and spent some time with my wife, but really all the extra time, apart from those things, went into to writing, uh, writing social code. And that's where, you know, this journey started. Um, you know, the idea of, of of being able to have a free and open source datomic never never left me, you know. It was still something that was in my mind. And um when I came across DataScript, it really felt like, you know, this was the thing. You know, I could find a way to make this like datomic. You know, there are no bad ideas. If you have the guts and the time, you can do it. And so when I was reading through the documentation, I found this listen function. And basically it um was fired every time a transaction hit data script and you could do something with this transaction um and i figured the transactions come in i serialize them store them and i want to re rebuild rebuild my my state i just read from them in reverse chronological in chronological order and um and there we go it was back sounds like i mean it's pretty much datomic I mean, as time goes, the initialization time probably just goes through the roof, but, you know, very simple solution. 
to into another machine, right? Um, and so I figured, you know, this kind of sequential stream of data sounded exactly like a job for Kafka. Now, here's the thing, folks. You know, the Atomic looked like it could be expensive, and AWS might be expensive, but for sure, Kafka was expensive. So I did what any reasonable developer would do. Any logical thing. The only logical thing. I rebuilt Kafka on Firebase. So I built Firestream, basically a, um, a library that's modeled after the Kafka wrapper, uh, Pyre, um, in Enclosure. Basically, same kind of interface, same kind of uh, paradigm, except it ran on Firebase and serialized stuff on Firebase. And I figured, there we go. So I hooked it up to the data script and transactions come in. I'll send it up, send them out, send them up, send them up. And then when I want to rebuild my state, I would just initialize and I would read them back. And there we go. I'd find a way to persistently store my data script DB. That's great. You know, but I want to stress this, stress this thing, you know? Don't want to go out there and tell people, try this thing out, and then it just uh, comes crashing down. So, you know what you want to do? Build, you know, uh, a map, you know, store it about, you know, one, 100 megs of data, and run it 10 times, send it to the, the Firebase, and uh, see how it performed, right? It wasn't too bad, to be honest. Um, I did keep on seeing, like, a... a a bottleneck, you know, at, at around, I think it was two megabytes a second. Yes. I need to get some more power out of that. So I kept on trying many alternatives, you know, do short bursts of writes, long writes. Um, but I was easy, easily writing gigs, you know, just going and going and going and going. Um, and then my laptop got really, really hot. Turns out, continuously writing gigs of data, um, you know, with your transaction transaction listener. Probably isn't the best thing from a performance perspective. My laptop was hot, hit my wallet really hard. Turns out the freeness of Firebase is free within reason. Um so that really hurt my wallet. Um, probably more so than the Atomic ever would. Um but it was a lesson I learned, so you don't have to. Um but then it got me thinking, you know what, there's no need for me to, you know, start from the bottom. I should really stand on the shoulders of giants. And that's what I did. You know, I stumbled across Data Hike, um, you know, built by the folks at Lambda Forge. Um, and Data Hike basically is is the data log database. It starts with data with data script as well. Um and it's really it's really underpinned by the hitchhiker tree. Right? Um the hitchhiker tree is um an exotic data structure. As the author calls it, um, and and it's basically what I was looking for, right? Basically, an open source free, free version of of the atomic, um, and so the journey began. You know, cloned the repo and started going through the source code, um, because I mean, I quickly learned that the community. If you want to know something about a database or about a library, just read the code. It's definitely more to the point than the documentation, if there is documentation. Anyway, in that, two things stood out. Bootstrap, because I mean, any front-end dev surely knows the name Bootstrap. Um, but that wasn't relevant at this point. And then I saw this file store thing. I was like, interesting. So if this thing can store to a file, surely it can store to, to, to files, right? And so I looked at this conserve namespace. And that took me to another repository by the same folks. Um, and basically it was a key value store that could run on any kind of backend. Um, and I went through the readme line by line, like we all do. Um, and I found this single line, right? That it could connect to CouchDB. Now, in my JavaScript days, I tried out a lot of databases, right? And I e immediately remembered CouchDB was JSON store, similar vibe to Firebase. I'm sure we could use that to get to get on to Firebase. And so luckily I'd already written a, a library that connected send data to Firebase, you know, for Firestream. And 
I figured let's try it out. And so I built a I built a, a library that really it's a conserved library that writes this key value store or creates a key value store out of Firebase. Um and uh, the cool thing is in in doing so I could now connect data hike to Firebase. You know, the only thing that was bugging me was, you know, Firebase has this limit that the value has to be at least ten at most ten megs. So I quickly found a way to split the to split the data if it came more and you see the P0, it'll be P1, P2, and so forth. And so there we were, good to go. Um with conserve ready. I could connect to data hike and data would flow in theory from data hike into conserve into my Firebase adapter for conserve and into Firebase. It was the perfect plan. And you know what? It worked out. So let's have a quick look see. Like Jamie Oliver has prepared something so I can show you what this looks like. Uh, so let's just spin up a ripple over here on the browser. You can see that's the Firebase suit on database. Um, at the moment, you can see there's nothing in, in this point. Um, but let's first, first test first, as per usual, we include, uh, see data hike, and then we include, um, data hike Firebase and now those are included. And then, um, now, so let me talk you through the config quickly. So basically, um, all data configs are similar, right? So you specify the store, which is this piece here, and the store has different properties. Um, so the back end here is Firebase. And then these properties here are basically the ones that come from the Firebase um, implementation, right? So the end key basically tells um, data Firebase which environment variable to go look which environment variable contains the um, service account credentials. This allows you to read and write into, into Firebase. So in this case, it's called Fire, and we'll be writing to to um, Firebase with the root data hike reclosure, right? As you can see, that's where we are here. Awesome, right? So that's the config. Now, if we try and connect to that config, what will we get? We should get, um, an exception because as you can see the database center exists it's now but now we can create the database and bada bing bada boom bada ba there we go you can see the data has been stored it's been stored in that same format from conserve because remember underneath data hike conserve is doing the 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 writing into the store in this case the store is firebase but you could actually have a conserve store that that writes to Postgres, which I also worked on. There's one that writes to Redis um, and so forth. I think that's the really cool thing about Conserve because it basically means you could build a data hike or datomic like um, database on any kind of, of um, ACID um, database, which is really neat, right? Um, okay, back to our, our, back to our repo. All right, so we've created our, our database now we can connect, right? And let's keep our connection. And then as is the custom, once you've, once you've created, you know, a data, data log DB, the first thing is to write your, write your schema. And that's usually your first transaction. And uh, we write it there. So name and age are basically the two identities um, or the new, or the properties that you have in there. Um, ooh, and you see that, yellow here means that it's updated i mean you'll notice there's almost still no no data so nothing more is up this is very little data so you'll see that you know basically we'll just see this for the most part i mean this is just a super long string because firebase currently doesn't support um binary data so this is a base 64 representation of our closure structure anyway now we want to transact we're going to add alice bob charlie and some unknown human who is 15 years old we pop those elements in there and see what number of datums have been created again we saw the update over here and now um we can create that data right state log right and so there we go you know we're looking for entities um the same entity we're looking for the name and the age 
and showing them. So you'll notice the nameless 15 year old is not shown because um, the constraint of having a name is not met. So that one is left out. So we only see Bob, Charlie and Alice. But let's say we wanted all the entities and their ages. We could run another query. And there we go, right? So that's really, that's really, you know, simple as that. I mean, it looks like, feels like, smells like Datomic. Um, no drama there at all. And um, as well, you mean you can delete the database. So if we delete the database, so we see and flip, disappears from Firebase. And now what happens if you try and connect? Let us see. If we connect, wah, 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 doesn't exist, right? So you can see it really is uh, simple to use, very, very um, straightforward. And I mean, with, with Firebase, um, it's just a dream. So um, we now have Python, right? Um, the thing I really enjoy about this is that it makes prototyping really easy because it means you can prototype um, many different businesses on the same same Firebase instance, you know, just separate databases or even just separate routes. Um, so I can actually now use Datomic a lot more, not Datomic, but Atomic a lot more often. Um, I don't really have to think about the cost, at least not yet. Maybe someday if I build a business that's as a terabyte of data, Atomic won't suffice, but that's a problem for another day. Premature optimization is the root of all evil. Okay, so, you know, I showed you, I took you through that. Um, and so this is, you know, basically where we are, you know, so I had the idea of with Kafka and Firebase, I have the Atomic and Firebase. Um, and some friends are actually building a startup around 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 this and using both of these in production. Um, so far, so, so good. Collected payments, got data in there, got paying customers. It's really great. Um, which is also really cool because, you know, when you do open source stuff, sometimes you think this idea is not something you'd bet your money on. In this case, you know, I bet my money on it and it's, it's working out. Um, so that's that's really, really fulfilling. You know, the, the last two years haven't been a waste. Um, so you may ask, okay, what's next? Well, uh, the folks at, uh, you know, Lambda Forge are working on Data Hack Server. Um, so at the moment, you know, Data Hack Atomic sit within my application. So the data so we can actually have an external server similar similar to Postgres or or um, you know Mongo or whatever, um, separate running as on a server on its own um, as an instance, and then you, your application actually connects to that. So um, so you know that's really what that will be the true fire atomic, right? So um, over the next while, maybe not right now. Um, so finishing some work on another project I'm working on, and once that's done. So maybe February next year, I'm going to really look on data X server and how I can connect that to Firebase. Because once we have that, you know, we can really have a deploy to digital ocean and there you have atomic running and you can connect um, all the applications there, no drama. So, so that's been my, my journey with Phytomic. Um It's been one hell of a ride. I think, you know, in having this really audacious idea to, to build, um, you know, Kafka on Firebase and Datomic on Firebase. You know, I've learned a lot about 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 closure, to be honest, and reliability and writing tests. And I think if it weren't for these things, I probably would be a much worse um, developer than I am. Um. So if you have any crazy ideas, folks, you know what? Let out the crazy and and try them out. You'll learn a lot in the journey. Might get burnt a few times, but you know, that's life. Um. So yeah. So I mean, here's some 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 links that I think might be useful. You know, the data hack repo. Hit up the folks uh, on on Discord. Very cool bunch of folks. Um, very welcoming, very supportive. Really helped me on my journey. Um, you can check out Conserve as well if you want to see a bit more about what happens closer to the actual store. Um, and then some really cool videos. Um, one of them about data log in general by Pithilus. That's a really great. They have watched a number of times. That really helped we understand um, data log databases. And then um, the video on hitchhiker trees. That one is, I mean, it's kind of above my pay grade and really not like a computer science type, but uh, amazing video and really explains it well. Um, and hitchhiker trees are just phenomenal. So give that a watch. And then um, 
also stop by the Lambda Forge website because they're doing really cool things um, in terms of data databases and making it freely available to the community and improving it. I mean, they even got um, they got closures together funding, I think last year. So definitely a great bunch of folks that's, that are really driving the community forward. So I'll give them a visit and, you know, if you see something interesting, you know, create a pull request, contribute. You know, the, the thing I really love about the, the closure community is that, you know, everyone pulls their weight. Um, so, you know, looking at you to pull your weight too. Um, and if there's anything you take away from, from this talk, it's this. Any application that can be written on Firebase will eventually be written on Firebase. So, why resist? Start now. Uh, that's all from me. Um, thank you, Reclosure, for having me. It's been great. Um, and uh, I'll catch you online. Cheers, folks. Mm -hmm.